Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm beginning my second week of teaching in a series that I have entitled The Christian Survival Kit. And you know, this little tiny thumb drive thing has, I don't know, gigabytes worth of stuff on it. And it's teaching through John 14, 15, and 16. And uh, I started this a week ago. We've already covered the first four things that Jesus told his disciples to do the night before his crucifixion. And this was a crisis situation. And I believe that this is the same progression of things that we have to do when we find ourselves in a crisis situation. The first thing he said, John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. Don't panic. How do you do that? The second thing is believe. Then the third thing, he talked about heaven. And he talked about how you have to put things into perspective. We need to look beyond the things that can be seen and see into the unseen realm. The fourth thing that I spent two days talking about last week was from John chapter 14, verses 4 through 7. And Jesus said in verse 4, He says, Whither I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? He just contradicted him and said, Nope, you're wrong. Boy, don't ever do that. You know, when God says that you're a winner, man, agree with Him. You may not see how it's working. It may not be visible to you at the moment, but don't come out and disagree with God. And then Jesus went on to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. They knew Jesus, but they didn't really know Jesus. They didn't know He was the way, the truth, and the life. They didn't fully recognize who they had with them. And I spent two days talking about how we need to go deeper. We need to know God better. And in a crisis, it, it's good for all of the time, but in a crisis situation, your relationship with God will sustain you often when you just don't have the knowledge. You, you, you can't, you don't have a formula. You can't see exactly what to do, but you can just hold on to the Lord and He will comfort you and minister to you and give you a peace that passes understanding is what it says in Philippians chapter 4. Man, there's been so many times that I haven't seen the way to go, but I, I just felt secure in the Lord and knew that God was going to show me what I needed to know. And relationship with God is crucial. The next thing, what I want to talk about here, after he had said this in verse 7, he said, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him and have seen him. So Jesus just said, From now on you have seen the Father, and you know him. And look at this. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. It'll satisfy us. You know, you may miss this if you just glance at it, but what he's saying is, Jesus, we aren't satisfied with you. You're saying that we know you and stuff, but man, if we could see the Father, then we'd be satisfied. We aren't satisfied right now. You know, if Jesus doesn't satisfy you, you're too hard to satisfy. And the sad fact is, I'm not saying this in condemnation, but there are Christians all around the world, people who've come to the Lord and you've received your salvation, but you know the truth is you really aren't satisfied with Jesus. Not because there's anything wrong with Jesus whatsoever. He is awesome. He is more than enough. But we just ha don't really know who He is. We don't know His goodness. We don't know how much He's protected us from. I think that one of the things that's going to amaze us when we get to heaven is to see how God supernaturally protect us and save our bacon so many times that we weren't even aware of. But they said, he said, from now on you've seen the Father and you know Him. They said, man, if you'll show us the Father, we'll be satisfied. They weren't satisfied with what they had. They should have been. But it's because they didn't really appropriate and know Him the way that they could have known Him. I talked about a lot of these things last week. In verse 9, Jesus responded unto Philip, saying unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? Jesus has spent three and a half years with these people, and yet they really didn't know him. They knew things about him. They could have told you all kinds of stories. They could have told you about the people that were raised from the dead, the blind eyes open. They could have recited his teachings to you. They could have told you a lot of information about him, but they didn't really know him. 
And I spent time last week showing that uh, the disciples really had a harder time knowing God than we do because they had to deal with his physical body. We don't. We can know him in the Lord. You know, let me use an example here before I go on to the rest of this. But I remember when The Passion of the Christ came out, that movie by Mel Gibson. And I had a friend who had seen that in a preview and he was so impacted by it that as I was at his church and we were singing something about the death of Jesus, he just like melted and crumbled on the floor. And, and he was talking to me later and he said that movie had just really impacted him. So I went to see that show, The Passion of the Christ, expecting to have an epiphany, to have some great relationship with God. And I am not critical of the movie. I think Mel Gibson did a good job. I glory in his... Uh, willingness to take the flack and the criticism. I'm not criticizing the movie, but as I was watching the crucifixion scene, I was actually disappointed in it. And comparing to my friend's overwhelming reaction to it, I was thinking, God, what's wrong with me? And you know what I realized was that through Scripture, I actually knew about the crucifixion and what Jesus suffered more than that movie was portraying. And let me also say this, more than his disciples knew. Like when they saw him thirst and he asked for something to drink and they gave him vinegar on a stick and he refused it. They saw that, but they didn't remember the scriptures. They didn't know that that was a fulfillment in Psalms chapter 69. When he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They didn't realize that was a fulfillment of Psalms chapter 22. They weren't seeing these things. See through hindsight and with the scripture and the Holy Spirit interpreting things and revealing things to me, I had a revelation of the crucifixion of Jesus that even his disciples that were present didn't have. The Holy Spirit has painted a picture and in my heart, I've seen the agony and the suffering of the Lord. And I don't know if I can convey this in a way that you can understand it, but you can actually know God better by revelation than you could if you were to see him in person. If you would have been there when Jesus was in his physical body, you can know him better by revelation. Who is the person that had the greatest revelation of who Jesus really was and the new covenant that he brought in out of all the New Testament figures? I would have to say it's the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul wrote half of the New Testament and he's the one that gave us this foundation of grace and of the new covenant. And yet, did you know that Paul wasn't one of Jesus' disciples that stayed with him and spent time with him for three and a half years? He was on the opposite side and he rejected the Lord during that time. And he came to know Jesus and what Jesus really did by revelation, not through just physical contact, physical, carnal, natural means, not by just knowledge being imparted unto him, but revelation coming unto him. You can know God better through revelation than you can through physical contact, through just knowledge. Boy, those are awesome statements. And I really believe that the revelation that God has given me of Jesus' crucifixion and death and resurrection is superior to what the disciples had at that time. Now, later on through the coming of the Holy Spirit, I believe that they also got that revelation and made a profound impact on them. But I'm talking about during the actual event, they didn't have the same revelation. It was more real to me in my heart than what I was seeing on that screen. And again, no criticism of Mel Gibson, but you know, they rated his movie uh, R rated. And he said that if he would have made it the way he really believed it was and how brutal it was, it would have been an, an X rated. Nobody would have ever gone to see it. He had to admit he toned it down. In my heart, the suffering of Jesus was greater than what was portrayed in that movie. It says in Isaiah chapter 52, I believe it's verse 14, it says he was mar, his face was marred more than any man and he didn't even look human. In that movie, The Passion of the Christ, he still looked human, he looked brutalized, but it was much worse than what was presented. And I got all that by revelation. So my point in saying all of this is, Jesus is telling them, guys, you don't know me. 
You know me, but you don't know me. You don't know who I really am. And then when Philip said, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied, look at what he said. He says, have I been so long time with you and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? If you saw Jesus, you saw the Father. Jesus, it says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, was the express image of the Father. That means a perfect representation, identical. He was a perfect representation, not just in his physical body, the clothes that he wore or something like that, but talking about his heart, the way he dealt with people, his attitude, his love, the way that he uh, stood against the hypocrites and stuff. All of those things were a perfect representation of God the Father. And he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And how do you say then, show us the Father? And then in verse 10, he said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. So he's talking about, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. They couldn't comprehend this. He wasn't just talking about the physical likeness, but the heart, the attitude, the passion. And they didn't really know him by the Spirit. They just knew him in physical, carnal ways. And then he says, the words that I'm speaking unto you, this isn't me, it's the Father speaking through me. And so here's the point I'm wanting to get across. I've talked about the first thing is you got to not panic. You got to believe God. You got to put things into perspective. You got to draw close to God. You got to know God. And how do you know God? Through the Word, the words that I speak unto you. This is how you realize who I am. It's not just by my mannerisms, not just by the things I do, but what have I said? How have I communicated? How have I released God? Jesus represented God perfectly. And we know him through his word. In John chapter one, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. It's talking about Jesus is the word. Jesus is God manifest. Man, this is powerful. God's word is how we know him. Let me turn over and use these verses out of second Peter chapter one. It says, Simon Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So many people are trying to get grace and peace multiplied unto them by praying for it, asking for it, begging God, telling God how desperate they are. Oh God, I need your help. It says grace and peace comes unto you through the knowledge of God. No knowledge of God, no grace, no peace. Wrong knowledge of God, no grace, no peace. And then he says in the next verse, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things, that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Everything that you need, it says all things that pertain unto life and godliness come through the knowledge of him. Man, that is a strong statement. Do you need healing today? Well, what do you do? Do you pray for healing? What you really need to do is pray for knowledge. Everything that pertains unto life and godliness, which is health, prosperity, joy, peace, on and on you could go, anything. It all comes through the knowledge of Him. This is the reason that the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God is the knowledge of God. This, Jesus, this is what Jesus was saying over here. He says, the words that I'm speaking unto you, they are communicating who God is. If you've heard the words, if you could hear it with your heart instead of just hearing it with your ears, if you could get revelation, then you would know God. The way you know God is through His Word. God reveals Himself through the Word. And I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing how people do not put this importance on the Word, but it says all things that pertain unto life and godliness come through the knowledge of Him. And then in the next verse, verse 4, 
talking about this knowledge of God, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The knowledge of God is what gave us these exceeding great and precious promises. God's knowledge gave us the word. You could say it this way, God's word contains the knowledge of him. If you want to know God, you are going to have to see him and come to know him as revealed in scripture. You know, I was talking to someone recently and they were saying, well, I know what the Bible says, but here's what I believe. And you know what that is? You could say a lot of things. You could say that's unbelief. You could say that's rebellion. But you know what it really is? It's you making yourself God. You're just basically creating your own God. You're creating an idol. You don't like what the Bible says about him, so you just create God in your own image the way that you want him to be. That's idolatry. You know what? We aren't smart enough to run our own life. God revealed himself to us through the word. Now, I will grant you this, that there is a difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Some things that were done under the Old Covenant were the wrath and the punishment of God are revealed. It's not done in the New Covenant. Somebody says, so did God change or change the rules? No, Jesus came and bore all of that punishment. And because of that, in the New Covenant, we don't see things exactly the same as they were in the Old Testament. So you have to have enough knowledge, proper knowledge. You need to study well enough that you can see the truth and get this right application of the word. But nonetheless, we have to have a revelation of who God is that comes through the word. If you want to know God, which is what I was talking about over here in John chapter 14, Jesus was saying, don't you know me? You've got to have intimate relationship with God and the way you do it is through the word of God. You know, the very next verse, I quit reading it, John 14, 11, but the very next verse in verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Did you know what? I wouldn't in a million years have just come up with this on my own that I would be able to do what Jesus has done. I mean, I see me and I see my limitations. I know the mistakes that I've made. I see Jesus and I think, how in the world could this happen? But through the word of God, the Lord has revealed to me that when I got born again, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I became a new creature. My body's not changed yet. My mind's not totally changed yet. But in my spirit, I am identical to Jesus. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 1 Corinthians 6, 17. I'm identical to Jesus. I have his power in life. And because of that, if I will believe and submit myself to who I am in the spirit, I can see the same works that Jesus did perform through me. I wouldn't have known that if it hadn't have been for the word. I wouldn't have known this about God. I wouldn't have known the authority that he gave me, the power that he gave me. And so the word has revealed this to me. You know, I was ministering in Corpus Christi, Texas, and I was preaching on these very things, the Christian survival kit. This has been 20, 30 years ago. And the pastor of the church got so touched with this, my meeting ended on a Wednesday. He thought about it all week, and on Sunday morning, he got up and used John 14, 12, and he says, the works that Jesus did, we're going to see done. We will see the dead raised. And as he was preaching on that, a man in the congregation stood up and grabbed his heart and fell over and there was a nurse in the congregation that she came up and checked his vital signs and she said he's dead. So they called 911. The fire station was directly across the street from this church and yet it took them 20 minutes to get there. And while they were waiting, you know, the service was just kind of over. Here was this dead man laying there on the front of the church. And finally it dawned on the pastor that, hey, this is what we're preaching about. We're going to do the same works that Jesus did and even greater works. And he just prayed and this man was raised from the dead. And when the paramedics finally got there, he was already raised from the dead. How did they know that? Through the word of God. The way you know God is through the revelation he gave of himself in the word. So I've talked about don't panic, believe, put things into perspective. You have to have a relationship with God that sustains you through a crisis situation. And how is it that you have that relationship? 
You have to know God through the Word. Brothers and sisters, this is just vital. And I'm telling you, by the way that most people do not study the Word, it shows that we don't fully believe this. You know, if I had time, I've got this series. I teach this in our Bible college. It's entitled A Sure Foundation. And it's talking about how that the Word of God is like a seed and everything that God ever wants to do in your life is in the Bible in seed form. And you have to take these scriptures and put them in your heart and let them germinate and produce healing, deliverance, etc. People are praying for healing, but have they taken the Word of God that is about healing, that contains healing and put it in their heart? It says in Psalms 107 verse 20, he says, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all of their destructions. It says in Proverbs chapter 4 that God's word is health to all of your flesh and life to them that find him. And on and on you could go. God's word contains whatever miracle you need in seed form, but you got to take it off of the Bible and put it in your heart. It's like a seed. It has to come off of the shelf and it has to be planted in the ground before it germinates. Your heart is the ground. You have to take the Word of God and take it off of these pages and put it in your heart. So in a crisis situation, you need to be in the Word. You need to be looking for God and wanting to know Him more and you need to get into the Word of God and start taking these things. And I, I'm can promise you that there are literally hundreds, probably thousands of times that I've been in a crisis situation. I knew that, man, God, I need you to do something. What do I do? And I just drew closer to God by taking scripture and reading it. And as I did that, God would quicken a verse to me. He would show me something that was my direct answer to the problem. And once that came, once faith came by hearing, my problem was over. I've seen this happen hundreds, thousands of times, and I know it'll work for you. But if you truly want to know God, you are going to have to know Him through the Word. And you can't make up your own God. That's an idol. You have to go to the revealed knowledge. You need to go to the Word that He gave us. This Word has been proven. It has been verified. God has preserved it. It was around long before you and I got here. It's going to be here long after you and I are gone. It is God's revelation to us. Everything that pertains unto life and godliness comes through the knowledge of Him, and the knowledge of God is what gave us these promises. And that's how we partake of this divine nature. So, man, this is just important. You've got to get into the Word. You've got to you got to know God through the Word. 